In the modern manufacturing environment, a variety of tools and holders are used in the CNC vertical milling centers. In today's video, we'll learn how to set up tools and holders for use in the machine. Let's review the lesson objectives. By the end of this video, students will be able to identify the parts of a CAT40 tool holder, properly grasp tool holders by hand, use a bench-mounted fixture to change tools in the following types of holders, set screw end mill holders, drill chucks, ER collet chucks, and solid body face mills or shell mills. Apply appropriate torque when loosening or tightening tools in holders. And finally, properly load tools into the machine spindle. Let's begin by identifying the major parts of every tool holder. The flange, the taper, and the pull stud, which is also known as a retention knob. To properly grasp the tool holder, some special considerations are needed. Never grasp the cutting tool itself. The tool has sharp edges. Additionally, never grasp the taper of the tool holder. This is the part that goes into the spindle of the machine. Also, do not grip the tool holder from the flange portion. There is a potential for your hand to become crushed between the flange and the spindle nose, causing a serious injury. The only safe place to grasp the tool holder is from directly below the flange, like this. Let's take a look at loading tools into holders now. Here's a bench-mounted tool loading fixture. Notice the triple plate construction designed to capture the flange on the tool holder. The groove on the flange should align with the center plate on the fixture. Rotate until the notch aligns with the fixture tab and pivot the upper locking arm to a closed position. Notice the tab is fully engaged with the notch. Select the proper hex key from a set. Use good quality hex keys from brand names such as Allen, Bondus, or Eklund. Cheaper hex keys can round out. Align the hex key with the set screw and use a firm pull in the counterclockwise direction to loosen the screw. If the wrench were to slip, ensure your fingers will not contact the end mill. Loosen the set screw a bit further. Use a shop rag to pull the end mill from the holder. Do not attempt to pull the end mill with your hands. Now let's install an end mill to the holder. If the tool has a weld and flat, ensure the flat is pointed toward the set screw. Insert the tool to the holder. Use a rag to avoid cuts from the sharp flutes on the tool. Gently tighten the set screw while feeling that it's engaging with the weld and flat. Pull the tool back and forth to verify the set screw has properly engaged the weld and flat. When engaged, center the flat beneath the set screw and tighten the screw, first to position, then with substantial torque by using the short arm of the hex key to engage the screw and the long arm to pull. Again, ensure your fingers will not contact the cutting tool if the wrench slips. Return the hex key to its proper location in the set so it's present and ready for the next use. Remove the tool and holder from the fixture and place it in a tool rack or into the machine spindle. Do not leave cutting tools and holders laying on the workbench where they may roll off or become damaged. Next, we'll load a twist drill. Before loading a new drill bit, we need to remove the previous tool from the drill chuck, which in this case is a form tap. Use the single tooth spanner wrench to engage the notch in the drill chuck. Apply a firm, steady pressure to open the chuck, releasing the tool. Twist drills come in three different size designations, fractional sizes, numbers or wire gauge sizes, and letter sizes. Now, we'll select the size we need. If you removed a drill bit from the chuck, return it to the proper place in the set so it's ready for the next use. Notice how turning the drill chuck causes the three jaws to move simultaneously to hold a smaller or bigger size tool. When tightening, ensure the tool is not gripped between only two of the three jaws. This is incorrect. Bring the jaws to a size closer to the tool's shank diameter before inserting the tool.
Here's that process again from a different angle. Ensure the tooth on the spanner wrench is engaged with the notch on the drill chuck. Apply firm pressure. It needs to be secure, but not crushing tight. The drill and holder are now ready for use. Next, let's change tools on an ER collet chuck type holder. This tool uses a multi-tooth spanner wrench. It cannot be placed over the side of the collet nut. The teeth must be engaged by sliding the wrench over the end of the collet nut, like this. Hold one hand on the wrench and use your other hand to provide an impulse to loosen the collet nut. A second application of the wrench is usually needed to unlock the collet nut. The tool can then be removed along with the collet and collet nut. Remove the collet from the nut by pressing firmly on the front side while tilting from the back side. ER collets typically come in sets of either inch or metric sizes. It's handy to have both sets, even if all of your tools are inch sizes. This gives you flexibility in holding many sizes and types of tools, including end mills, drills, taps, countersinks, and more. Find a size that's a close slip fit to the tool without excessive free play. It looks like this is the size to use. Notice the groove in the ER collet. The groove is retained by a clip ring embedded in the collet nut. Clip the collet into the nut by pushing while tilting. A firm click should have been heard and felt, and the collet should not easily fall out of the collet nut. Screw the collet nut partway onto the tool holder. Insert the cutting tool, ensuring the collet grips only the shank and not the cutting flutes. Tighten by hand first, then using the wrench with a firm pressure applied. Again, ensure all teeth on the wrench are engaged with the collet nut. Remove the tool and holder from the fixture and it's now ready to use. When working with a solid body face mill, sometimes the carbide inserts need to be indexed to a new cutting edge or even replaced entirely. Here's that process. Use a specialty Torx driver to remove the screw holding the carbide insert. In our case, these screws are very tight. We'll use a wrench on the hex portion of the driver to assist. Index the insert to a new cutting edge and tighten the screw firmly. It's important to ensure that the tool body and insert are both clean during this process. Repeat the process for the remaining inserts around the tool body. Let's get ready to load tools into the machine. We'll call up a different tool station by typing T followed by the tool number and pressing ATC forward or reverse. The machine will change to the commanded tool. Using your left hand, firmly grasp the tool holder below the flange before pressing the release button. When unloading tools, be ready to take the weight of the tool and holder that will drop out. Warning! Never press the release button without first having a hand on the tool holder. Releasing the tool without firmly grasping it first can cause damage to the tool and holder, as well as the workpiece, fixturing, and even the machine. To install a new tool, hold it below the flange and insert it into the spindle. Be sure the drive lugs are aligned with the notches in the flange. Give the tool a spin to check alignment. This one was done correctly. Here's what it would look like if we did it wrong. Notice the drive lugs are not aligned with the notches in the flange. This is a big problem and can damage the machine by bending the tool carousel and possibly ruining the spindle, resulting in thousands of dollars in repairs. If this misalignment happens, simply remove the tool holder and try again. Hold the button as long as necessary for the tool to align. 
Give it a spin to ensure the drive lugs are properly engaged with the notches in the flange. Here's the process one more time from closer up. Note, never press the tool release button on the Haas control panel. This button performs the same function as the tool release button on the spindle cover and will drop the tool out of the spindle. It's recommended to disable this key using setting 76, but it's still good practice to never press it. Additionally, never remove the spindle probe from the machine. The spindle probe is a delicate instrument calibrated specifically for the machine it's installed to. Many machine shops, including the one at Clark Magnet High School, keep the spindle probe permanently in tool station number 10. This essentially eliminates tool station 10 from being available for other types of tools. The probe is sealed and will not be damaged by light chips or coolant in the machine. This concludes our tool loading video. Be sure to review the procedure with your instructor prior to setting up tools on your own. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.